Recently, I did a video unboxing and kind of given my initial impressions of the Taito Egret 2 Mini Arcade Machine. And while I think it's a pretty interesting machine, I, I think it's kind of cool, I know it's not for everyone. And after having it for a few weeks and messing around with it more, I wanted to discuss some more thoughts that I have, as there are some things that came up after the fact, after I did my video, uh, such as issues with the machine, uh, compatibility with controllers, there are certain things I didn't cover in that first video, and I do think I have some interesting stuff to discuss today. So ultimately, was this just like a big waste of money for me? Because in the end, I, I have to think about certain things when it comes to my channel and buying products. Like this was not provided to me for purpose of review or anything. I bought it, and now is it something that's just sitting collecting dust because it was just used for you know, the business that I have here on YouTube, sharing my thoughts and doing product reviews and whatnot, or am I actually enjoying the thing? Now, when I first covered this, uh, I didn't have any issues with the product and I still don't, but shortly after my video, I had another YouTuber hit me up asking like, hey, did you have any issues? I saw you did a review. And I'm like, what, like, what kind of issues are they talking about? And this individual stated that their system was like crashing or freezing, something like that. And I knew like shortly after my video, I'd started seeing people mention um, that using the incorrect power supply on this device could cause issues where you get really bad lag or the system just doesn't boot up properly, that kind of thing. So I let them know like, hey, uh, you know, it requires, you know, a specific type of power, you know, it, it has very spe you know, specific specifications that it needs. You can't just plug the included USB cable into anything. It does require five volts, 2.4 amps for 12 watts at minimum in order for this thing to run properly. I've been seeing negative reviews on Amazon and a few other places that are like, hey, the system doesn't work or the lag is extremely bad. And it's kind of similar to a Raspberry Pi in the sense, if you don't use the proper, you know, amps, voltage, whatever, the, the, the proper specs for the power, it's gonna hinder the performance of the device. And this is very touchy. It's got that very specific requirement. And if you go under what the minimum requirement is, even just a little bit, you're risking the system just not booting up or freezing or the games like running slow having lag in the games and then people think that's you know what the product is and it's just a power supply issue it's kind of weird I, I mean why couldn't they have they just included the brick with the proper you know specs on it? it all these companies are getting cheap nowadays but for the price of this thing it really should have been included so that youtuber after i mentioned all that they came back and was like oh man appreciate it like that solved the problem but it is kind of ridiculous now, I don't know what the boxes look like for the review units. I believe they were sent out uh, through Strictly Limited Games because I'd seen through them, their version, which we have talked about in the past, has the blue buttons and blue uh, ball top for the joystick, for the arcade stick, whereas the Japanese release, it's the pinkish, purplish color. I'm not sure exactly what you want to call it. So I don't know if the boxes are any different, but on the Japanese box, it does specifically tell you 5 volts, 2.4 amps, 12 watts. But yeah, everything surrounding those numbers is in Japanese. If you can't read Japanese, you may not know what it's talking about. You need a very specific, you know, power supply. It's kind of crazy, man, that for the price. Because if you're interested in one of these things, you're going to spend anywhere between a couple hundred dollars just to get the base unit up to like 500, if not more, depending on what the shipping costs are. And it's these things are not flying off the shelves, mind you. I remember when Strictly Limited Games put out the email about like reserving, like pre-ordering, like reserving a, a pre-order spot, essentially, because maybe they thought these things were going to be like scalped and all sorts of craziness. As of the recording of this video, they still like for the $370 one that doesn't even include shipping, um, they still have 80% of their stock left. These things are not flying. The $500 bundle, they have about a little over half left. So these things are not flying. They're available out there, but they're just so damn expensive for what they are. You got to really love the games that are included. I think the controllers, for the most part, 
were pretty, you know, quality in my opinion, other than the standard like controller. I just felt it felt a little cheap. So yes, you can use other controllers instead of buying, you know, their arcade stick, which I think their arcade stick around the hundred dollar price point isn't bad. But if you already have other devices, it's worth checking it out as you could still buy these arcade sticks later. Uh, I don't know for how long, but as an example, the Sega Astro City Mini, that full-size like single-person arcade stick, that works on this device just fine. You just plug it in and it works. And then the same thing with the Astro City Mini, like the standard pad that you could buy separate. Uh, I'm not sure if those things are still available out there. Not my favorite controller, just like the uh, Igret 2 Mini one, I didn't really care for too much, but that can be used as well. The only problem with some controllers is that they're not gonna have that menu button. It's not made for this system, so you're not gonna have that button to bring up the menu. You'll have to press it on the actual system, and that's how the Sega Astro City Mini stuff is using it on this device. You gotta press the actual menu button on the, the arcade machine to bring that up, as there's no button dedicated to it, but everything else works just fine. So if you already got those controllers, they're great for this thing. Now another controller, that you could use is the Sega Genesis, uh, the 8-Bitto M30, the 2.4 gigahertz one that is used for like the Sega Genesis Mini. That works just fine as well. So that was uh, a pretty nice surprise using that controller on this device. Just plug in the dongle and you're ready to go. There was a few controllers I did try like the RetroBit uh, 2.4 gigahertz controllers and they just didn't work for me. Um, I have to mess with them a little more. I'm not sure if they're supported or not. But the one cool thing is uh, if you have the Wingman SD from Brook, the adapter for the Sega Dreamcast and the Sega Saturn to use a ton of different controllers, we covered that thing on my channel in the past. You could use that on this system to use a PlayStation 5 DualSense controller. And with that, you could use the analog stick. Everything just works. And then the PS button actually brings up the menu. So they have a firmware specifically for that that they provided to me to check out. And it works great if you want a wireless controller for this device. I mean, if you already have one, cool. And you're looking forward to this device or you bought one already, why the heck not, right? So the other thing I didn't show in my previous video was HDMI out. Now there's numerous different modes that you could set up with that. And I actually think it's kind of nice it looks pretty sharp as long as you put the filter on. I thought that was kind of strange. Normally I want to turn filters off, but I think the way it's set up is you put the filter on and then it's sharp pixels. So you just got to mess with it, see what you like, but they have wallpapers for all the games. If you play it with wallpapers on, you can stretch the games out a little bit. You could also go into vertical mode if you have a monitor that you can move around. I thought that was pretty nice. So that's a, a, a neat little feature. It, it works great doing HDMI out, and that's one of the things I like with some of these mini systems other than the Neo Geo Mini because it just looks bad on a TV. But all these other ones, like Sega Astro City Mini, that's one thing I like doing is using them as a console and just playing these games. But now, in the end, after having messed with this, I realized like, I already have access to most of these games, and I know any of these systems that they sell, you could just go on the internet, download those games, put them on a Raspberry Pi, put them on your PC, emulate them through MAME. I understand that. This isn't really for somebody who just, you know, wants to play for free. I mean, free is always the best. Uh, don't get me wrong here. This is something that, you know, for a collector, somebody who likes what they see, uh, they dig the brand, that kind of thing. Maybe they're setting up a mini arcade for uh, brownies or, or, you know, sprites or something. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just always kind of dig these things and I usually grab them to do video reviews on. And with the Sega Astro City Mini, that one I used quite a bit, even off camera, not on my YouTube channel, because I really enjoyed that thing. Now with the Taito Igra 2 Mini, I haven't been as fascinated after the fact. Like I was fascinated with it when I got it and before, but now that I've had it and I'm playing these games, I'm like, okay, these games are on other systems like all the at game systems. Like these are games that are licensed out all over the place, all over your face. And they're cool games, don't get me wrong, but I already have them on other machines. Not all of them, but a good portion of them, right? And in the end, these are not my favorite arcade games. Some of them are really cool. A good handful of them I really dig, but already having access to them officially 
through other means, this kind of lost the sparkle for me. I'm not as like excited about it anymore. I don't really use it as much. I think it's the nicest quality looking one as far as this category, but at the same time, it's gonna depend on you, the game list. Ultimately for me, it did turn into after YouTube videos, kind of a waste of money because I'm not using it. Just throw it back in the box and put it away as I haven't been compelled to play it anymore. And that's unfortunate. These things are crazy expensive for what they are. At $200, I really, I mean, it's hard to, to justify cost on anything. It's hard to say, well, it should be this price. I don't know who has to be paid, what things cost, uh, you know, manufacturing, that kind of stuff. Businesses got a business, they got to be profitable. So I don't know what's fair to say that these things should be sold for, but I definitely feel, you know, like strictly limited games sitting on these things and they still have a lot left as far as pre-orders go. Uh, it kind of speaks to that. The price is just too much, man. Way too much. So that's kind of my final thoughts on this thing for the time being anyway. I mean, maybe I'll have more thoughts later on. I mean, I really haven't had a problem with the device with lag or the power issues, but it was kind of a thing that just worked out for me. But there you go. Let me know what you think down below. Really do appreciate every single one of you guys. Thanks for watching. I will catch you on the next one. Bye.